Hey busy bees, welcome back to another Wednesday weeknight meal video. I'm Zung and this week we are gonna be cooking up some carne asada tacos. Wow. <sighs> tacos, it's actually Tuesday when I'm filming this so it, so it totally fits Taco Tuesday, but you guys are seeing this on Wednesday. Either way, it's gonna be delicious. Give this video a thumbs up if you love tacos and carne asadas, and don't forget to subscribe below for more easy weeknight Wednesday meals. All right, guys, so we're gonna start by making the carne asada marinade. Yes, you can make your own carne asada marinade, and it's so simple. If you guys have the time to do this overnight, like the night before, I highly recommend it. But if you don't really have time, I would say maybe give this marinade an hour to really soak through. I'm using a different cut of meat this time, Typically, carne asada is made with skirt steak, but here I'm using flat meat. It has a lot more, it's like more grainy, and the marinade can really soak through the meat. Now, if you guys don't wanna use beef, you can always substitute for chicken, or even use this marinade for uh, vegetables, zucchinis, portobello mushrooms, even bell peppers. I feel it, like it would go really well with it too, but for our video today, we're gonna use beef. All right, so here I have all the ingredients laid out. I'm gonna first start with four cloves of minced garlic. Then I have one teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of chili powder to give it that smokiness, half a teaspoon of sea salt, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. This will give it that zing. And then here's the honeysuckle twist. Now you won't find soy sauce in a lot of um, Hispanic Latin cuisines, or maybe you do nowadays, I'm not sure. But I just thought that the soy sauce adds a really nice, smoky, salty, umami flavor to the carne asada. Plus, I always have it on hand, so it's a new way of incorporating soy sauce to any meal. I have two tablespoons of it, dump it in. Juice from a whole lime, and I like rolling it like this to really release the juices. Also guys, what, oh, <laughs> also guys, whenever you're choosing limes, make sure you find one with like a thin skin and it's super smooth. I found that these types of limes, these characteristics produces the most lime juice. See, looks nice and juicy. Next, we have juice from half an orange. This will add um, a subtle sweetness to the marinade. Erisi's been loving oranges, so I'm saving the other half for her. It's a messy fruit though, I have to say. Uh, she gets it like all over herself and I end up having to clean all the sticky mess out after. Now, this is totally optional if you like cilantro or if you don't like cilantro you can leave it out but i feel like carne asada you have to have cilantro i have about half a cup here and i'll just dump it in but i have a question for my busy bees who don't like cilantro out there like when cilantro is used in marinades similar to this like if you go to restaurants do you taste the cilantro after even if it's not like physically in the dish but they used it for um the marinade, does it still taste soapy to you? I would love to know. Now the last thing you need to add is some olive oil. I'm gonna add about maybe a quarter cup just to kind of seal everything up and really helps cling to the meat. This is when I really like eyeballing. All right, that looks good. And now with my whisk, I'll just mix, mix, mix. Now I like just giving this a quick taste to make sure it's perfection. Mm. Nice and salty, but also a little bit acidy too. Now I'll add my meat. So for the meat, you guys can add anywhere from one and a half to two pounds of meat for this marinade for it to coat evenly. Here, this guy weighed about one and a half pounds. It's a heavy one but I like the marbling, and like I mentioned earlier, the flat meat has a lot of like grain so that the marinade really soaks through. And it's also super tender. 
If you don't want to use flat meat, you can also always use skirt steak, which is what they typically use. Rub it around, flip it over. Grab some of the goodness on top too, and rub it in. So you guys, I got this dish at Ikea, and I love how like small and flat it is, and it's perfect to marinate something like this. If you don't have um, a small and shallow dish, you can always use like a plastic bag, like one of those freezer bags, and just lay it down, so making sure that the meat is totally marinated, um, covered in the sauce. So, like I said, I'll let this sit overnight, but if you guys don't have time, one hour should be pretty good. All right, guys, so the meat is pretty much done marinating. Haha. <laughs> Transparency, it's actually a swap out. I made this last night so that you can see what it looks like when I marinate it overnight. Since my grill pan is pretty small, I'm not gonna add this whole piece on there because it's gonna start to steam. I cut it in half, but if you guys are planning on grilling this outside on like a like a real grill, go ahead and just lay this whole piece down. And I'm just gonna turn it on super high, let it get hot, kind of smoking hot. And then I'm just gonna grill off the flat meat for about four to five minutes each side. So our meat is done grilling to a perfect medium, medium rare. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you guys how I slice it. I forgot to mention, after you finish grilling it, let it rest on a platter so that the juices redistribute. Don't touch it. Just let it do its thing for at least five minutes. So whenever you're cutting meat, beef specifically, you wanna cut against the grain. So the grain right here is going down. So I'm gonna be cutting it kind of like diagonally like this so that it's not chewy. Now with my knife, I'm just angling it at 45 degrees. I like it kind of thin, but see how there's just a slight pinkness in the middle? That's how I like my meat. How do you guys like yours? All right, so there's our meat. Typically for tacos, carne asada, they kind of chop it up finer, but I'm not really sure which way I should go. Let's do a poll on Instagram stories. Every time I run out of ideas or I can't decide, I always ask uh, Instagram stories what they think. And usually you guys are always right, so we're gonna make this interactive. And of course, because I love GIFs, gotta add a taco. Taco! Yeah. Okay, votes are in, they said no. All right, leaving it whole it is. I really only looked at the first like four comments because <sighs> we're filming. So if you guys wanna chop this up, you totally can. But let me go ahead and put this back on the platter and then we'll assemble our tacos. So here I have my tortillas and I love using the corn and wheat tortillas or corn and flour mix. You can find them at Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, pretty much anywhere these days. Um, if you wanna find just regular corn tortillas, make sure they're the soft street taco kind. Um, Cause corn tortillas tend to be kind of hard. All right, so let's make three. Just add some meat. And I'm keeping the toppings really simple. Next, I'll add a little bit of salsa. I just got my favorite one from the supermarket. Pico de gallo would go really well with this as well. And then I like adding a little bit of onions and cilantro right on top. And then if you want, a wedge of lime. You can put that on the side too if you want, but I like mine nice and tangy. So I'll put it on and now we'll give it a try. Wow. I have to say that meat was perfect. It's so juicy, flavorful, and my tip with the soy sauce, it really kind of kicks it up a notch. This is so delicious, and it's the perfect summer food. Mm. 
If you guys need a side dish for this, I have the perfect elote corn salad recipe that's on my blog. I will link it in the description box below. Anyways, let me know you guys what your favorite taco Tuesday weeknight meal Wednesday inspiration is in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time on our weeknight Wednesday meal series. Bye.